KG, KG, KG. Where's KG? Where's KG? KG, KG, where's KG? Let's go. Yo. What up, what up, KG? What you saying, bro? You good? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. How you been? Yeah, man. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, that's good, man. What you been up to? Talk to me. Talk to me. What you been up to, man? Nah, no, man. This obviously, this virus thing is killing everything right now, isn't it? Mm. So I've just been trying to work hard and that, get myself fit. How you been? How you, how you been doing that inside? Inside the yard? In, at home? Yeah, yeah, no, I got a bike at the at the crib, so I'm doing yeah. that. Um, going outside as well, doing some runs on the grass and that, trying to find somewhere. It's difficult at the moment, but yeah, you've been do. doing that. You've been doing the five um, kg runs. No, nah, you know what? I've been giving work for my sports scientist, so like anything he gives, I have to do kind of thing. But I ain't really attempted that five k run. What about yourself? Yeah. yeah, I've done it. I've done it. Now. I've been getting twenty fives and that. I'm trying to get to twenty one or. 22 and that, but it's, it's tough though. I'm not gonna lie, I'm hearing people are doing it in 16s and that, so it's mad. Yeah, that's all mad. Like, I'm not doing it in 16, I can say that for free. Talk to me, man. Talk to me. Tell the people, them for the people that know, don't know you like that, tell the people them where you're from and how you started football. Like, what's your background and stuff? Um, obviously, wait, 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 I did say 5kg runs. Allow it. <laughs> are you mad? Listen, wait, let me wait, 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 let me start. You man allow it. Listen, 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 listen. Hey, hey, noobs. I said, I said five k, but obviously I said his name KG. So I've been saying, I've been trying to do the. You, no, I love it. You man, I love it. I love it. Let's go. Hey, oh. KG, listen to them. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Alright. So, um, obviously, originally I grew up in Greenwich. Yeah. Um, signed for Trot when I was twelve. <laughs> so went through the ranks there. Obviously. Mm. Worked hard, um, managed to uh, get into the first team at about 16, made my debut about 17. Mm -hmm. And then like, everything was was sweet, whatever. And then obviously, you know what it's like. You go for a period where mm -hmm. your team's doing a rut. And obviously, I was a young player at the time. So I kind of got shifted. I was back and forth between first team and yeah. 23s. So that was a difficult period for me, you know. Yeah. And then I went on loan to Cambridge, I think just before you left. Just for you, yeah. that's the one I to Cambridge. No, I think, I think he was there before I come. I think before I come. I was there, what, in 2000 and... Was it 14 or 15? Might have been 15. I come, no, I think he was there 2014 because I come after. Because I remember the boys telling me that you was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah I went there and obviously... I went, like, you could do month loans then. Yeah. And like, I went there. Like didn't even want to go there originally because obviously mm. I was playing the championship for Charlton. And it was one of them ones like, why am I going there sort of thing? Yeah. But I wanted to play games. And I kind of... Took it for granted, you know. Like I went there mm. with an ego, mm. knew that I'd be better than most players there, mm. and then it just didn't work. I ended up being on the bench, and I just said, you know what? Like, I'm not extended. Forget it. Get me back down, yeah. back down to South. Because obviously the facilities were a lot better there. Like we were training on cricket pitches and that in Cambridge. Yeah, like, it was a dead. And then mm. obviously we got. It was a good opportunity. That didn't work out. Um, so everything was just like I felt like the world was against me mm. so then obviously eventually um, I broke through like again well, how old was I 19, 20 I broke through again like in the first team moved to the first team change room um, and then I weren't playing again and I was just like nah like, what's going on I'm doing everything in training I'm not playing and then I remember um, I got the call in January like Crawley wanted me again like League 2 and I was just like do I fancy it? And I said, you know what, I've got to go, I've got to go do this. So I proved to myself that I can do it. So I went there, done well, managed to prove that I can handle that level at the time where my headspace was at. Went back to Charlton um, season before this season, so last season. Um, and I just, yeah, I just flew, man, from from the, the first game of the season and then I get my move to Huddersfield. And then since then, it's just yeah. been, it's been a roller coaster, man, but a fun one. 
No, you, you've been. I see. I see some of your goals. You've been scoring and that. Like, yeah, you said it was a bit tough when you was in and out the squad and that. Like, did that? How did that affect you mentally? Yeah, no, it's tough, man. Especially when like everyone's raving about you, talking mm. about you're gonna go to the next level, and then like you're doing so well. But then at the same time, it affects your development. Like I didn't yeah. realize it. Because when you get into the men's game at such a young age, it's just pure games, games, games. It's not about yeah. learning the game. Everything's about mm. winning. So obviously I'm travelling on the bench. Like I'm not used to being on the bench at these times. I'm always yeah. used to playing. playing so yeah. obviously going through that, like you start getting head loss. Like what am I doing here? Like yeah. you're just bringing me 19th man, bringing me like to be on the bench, not bringing me on. Mm. And at the time you think you're better than certain players. But sometimes yeah. you just need to look at the bigger picture and be like, "Raw, oh, I'm young." Yeah. Like, these people jobs on the line, you know. Like, if you lose certain oh. games, get relegated. Get relegated. Get sacked. People's money, sacked, yeah. Sacked. People's money go down. Like, mm. you don't realize that until you you grow up a little bit, you know. Mm. And obviously, I've gone through that, and I'm lucky to go through that at a young age. Mm. No, that's sick. That's sick. So, you, like you said, you had that little roller coaster bad period, kind of thing. So, you, like, you went from child, and you went on. You had a couple of long spells. When you got that move, obviously, you got um, you got relegated with um. Was it um, Huddersfield, right? Yeah. So when when you when you got that move though to the Prem because you you played a couple of games, like how was that feeling? That like, like you're finding the Prem at a young age. Obviously, you said like this 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 is what kids live for. Like this is like a dream. So how how was that feeling? Like you're finally in a Prem. Yeah, nice. No, it's a feeling you can't describe. And like I said, from the place that I was at, to even think I'd probably get to the Prem where my headspace was at, I wouldn't have thought it. When I was younger, I always thought, yeah, I could play in the Premier League. I always back myself. But, like, to get that move, like, obviously knowing the situation Huddersfield was in, but, like, yeah. I just saw it as this is a, this is a, a lifetime opportunity, you know? Like, I might not get this opportunity again. Yeah. And lucky enough, I went in and I was lucky to play out how many games I did in a short time, you know? I managed to get, I think, about 13 games and nine starts and score four goals, you know? Yeah. And for me, like, scoring in the Premier League, there's no better feeling. Scoring in general, there's no better feeling. Yeah. But in the Premier League, like, can't describe it, man. Like you're paying, you're going away to Tottenham Hotspur, the new stadium. Mm -hmm. You know you're playing Liverpool at Anfield. You know they were Champions League finalists that year. Yeah. Like it's just crazy. No, they, no, they even won the Champions League that year. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just, when, it's just crazy. When, when, you, when you went there, when you, did you get? Was it Jan? You went? No, I went in January. Yeah, yeah. What was it like? Like, um, what was it like knowing that? What games was you looking forward to? Like, obviously, you're looking forward to every game that you play in the Prem. But was there, like, a big fixture, like like you said, against the Spurs, the um, Liverpools and that, thinking, wow, like, I'm actually walking out at Anfield or they're coming to our ground and we're going to play, like, Liverpool, Van Dijk and then people dead? Yeah, no, it's crazy. So, obviously, my first game was Chelsea and my second <laughs> game was Arsenal. Wow. <laughs> it was like, and obviously, I'm an Arsenal fan, so mm. to play against Arsenal was like, rah, I like, get off the chain to play against Arsenal. And I managed to even score against them, you know. So that was, for me, that was like a dream come true. true. But obviously, playing against that like, Chelsea first game, getting smacked, I think it was 5 0. But th just looking at the quality, it's like, nah, this is different level. Like, obviously, we watch it on TV, we watch it in the stands. But to be on the pitch, like, it's, it's mad. You see people like Eden Hazard on the pitch, and that, like, it's just crazy. There's always, there's always levels in it. Obviously, you played in a champ, you played in League One, whatnot. But. Like I always tell people, like uh, people get people get it twisted. I've spoken to a couple of people that played in a conference, and they say our oh, conference is just like League Two. I said, don't get it twisted. You might think that, but give them a sniff in League Two. Like they'll bang goals. Don't think it's it's not easy. You know, it's mm. not easy. There's always levels. Like you said, you played in a champ, but obviously Premiership is elite. So any mistake is a goal, probably. Yeah, every mistake. You know, you, I think we play Liverpool away, and um. Our goalkeeper tried to play out to our holding mid and he tried to turn without looking his shoulder. And then, um, I can't remember who intercepted, I think it was Cater and passed it to one of their players and they scored within two minutes. And obviously, Liverpool were unbelievable last year, you know. Mm. And we're thinking, oh my days, like, are we really going to mess this up? And then, next thing you know, you're one minute down in, in two minutes and then the rest of the game you're chasing it. Mm. What made you, what made, sorry to take, take, let's take it away from. Not football, but let's take it back. What made you get into football? What that was it just? Do you know what, Medi? Like, if I'm honest, when I was younger, I didn't really like ball. Yeah. Like, I didn't even really like ball. Like, it was one of them ones where I used to go watch my brother play ball when he was younger. Yeah. 
and like it just and I always looked up to my brother. So it's one of them ones where it's like, oh, like, my brother's kicking ball. Like, let me jump on it, sort of thing. Mm. And I was lucky that like, I was always quick. So I was raw at the start, and yeah. then like, I'm playing Sunday league and I'm banging in goals. I'm just like, oh, hold on a minute, here. like I'm doing all right. And then he was, I a, he, what, he was a boxer. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> <laughs> Esri, yeah, say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, um, yeah, no, it was probably my brother, you know, like, and obviously, as I started kicking, like, my dad always loved me kicking ball, but he never really forced me into doing anything. So once I started, like, showing a bit of love towards it, like, he'd have me in the park every day, training, and then, yeah, I went from there, really. Mm. No, that's sick, 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 sick. What do you, are you missing ball right now? I bet you just want to. Be back out there, like scoring goals. Yeah, man. I think obviously the first the first week was all right. Like obviously you get a little break from ball. Obviously it's not a break because what's going on, but like it's a championship. You, as you would know, it's a heavy schedule. Mm. So to have like that first week was all right, but now it's just getting dead, man. Like doing runs by yourself. Mm. You know, it's not the same. You know, it's not the same training with the group. It's not the same fitness. Mm. So now, man, definitely missing it. So are you up north now? Are you up north now? No, I'm back down south at the moment. Okay then. No, so let's take it away from football though. Like, are, are you football mad? Are you a, are you a typical person like like Chuba and them and there where it's football in the morning, football in the afternoon, football at night? Like you can watch football from Friday to Sunday. Come. No, I used to be like that, but then I used to think like the more I watch football, the more I overthink about things. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. The more I overthink about my game, so. Yeah. Now I try to kind of stay away from it a bit. Obviously, if it's yeah. Champions League nights, I'll watch it. You know, if it's big championship games and my boys are playing, I'll watch it. But, like, if it's just in any game that there's no meaning to it for me, I won't really watch it. Like, I try to take myself away from that and try to focus on other things, you know. But when, when you're not playing football, what do you get up to? What do you like doing? Like, forget football. Let's forget football now. Like, what does KG like doing? Well, I'll be honest with you, like... I can't remember what I used to do because of this quarantine. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, man, like chilling with the chilling with the boys, you know, playing mm. PlayStation, you know, interacting with people. Yeah. Like, because I see, you know I, see the like. picture, I see the little picture you you man put up Hackerson. Yeah, you like Hackerson, yeah. Yeah, I like a trip to Hackerson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I like I love food in it. So obviously, if I get a chance to go eat, so obviously mm. you know what it's like, man. Like the industry that we're in, we can't just go out and, and go out eat and all eat, the time yeah. on it, on mm. any on any given day like that. So no, like if I can, you know, I like to link up with the boys and go out for food. You know, do mm. things. You know, I don't know. Like on like just say on a Friday night if you have got a game Saturday, how do you how do you prepare for a game? How do you take your mind off off the game like just to relax in it, or are you thinking about the game, thinking about tomorrow? What's that, on a Saturday? Yeah, like, just say on a Friday, day before. How do you prepare yourself? So Friday, I just I just treat it like any other weekday, you know? I don't really think about the game the next day. So I'm just, I have a banging quad, banging FIFA, like, just chilling. Like, like I said, maybe the, if I'm up Leeds and my boy's around or, or my missus is around, whatever, I would just, would just chill. You know, like, there's no difference in what I do. Like, I, just, I try not to, like I said, overthink things. When you overthink things, you know, it can affect your game the next day. Yeah. And that's what I've learned since I got older. No, that's sick. That's sick. Obviously, now you're playing, you're scoring goals. Like, obviously, it looks like the season's going to come to you. And then now. But what's, what, like, obviously, everyone's got, like, dreams to go further now. What do you want to do from now? Like, obviously, you want to score goals. Do you, do you see yourself progressing? And, yeah, like, I think to push on? Get yeah, enough on move? Yeah, that's the, next, that's the next step for me, you know. Um, obviously, to play at the Premier League, you know, I'm enjoying my time at Huddersfield at the moment. Of course, you know, ever since I got there, the fans have been great. Was, me and wait, wait, was Ezri on you? What do you say? He said you should be watching videos of centre centre halves. Hey, when I buck Ezri, Ezri yeah, he's though. in trouble. You know, he's in trouble when I buck him. Kill this guy, man. Nah, um, I can't remember what I was saying. This guy's interrupting. Um, no, nah, yeah, um, I'm enjoying my time at Huddersfield, obviously. Obviously, my aim is obviously playing the Premier League, of course. Um, and obviously, if I keep doing what I'm doing, it's like, man, like the industry that we're in, we can't just go out and, and go out, eat, eat all the time yeah. on, on, mm. any, on any given day like that. 
So no, like if I can, you know, I like to link up with the boys and go out for food, you know, do mm-hmm. things, you know. No, no. Like on, like just say on a Friday night, if you got a game Saturday, how do you, how do you prepare for a game? How do you take your mind off, off the game, like just to relax in it, or are you thinking about the game, thinking about tomorrow? What's that on a Saturday? Yeah, like just say on a Friday, day before. How do you prepare yourself? So Friday, I just, I just treat it like any other weekday, you know. I don't really think about the game the next day. So I'm just I have a banging quad, banging FIFA, like just chilling. Like I said, maybe the, if I'm up Leeds and my boys around or, or my missus is around, whatever, we'll just, we'll just chill. You know, like, there's no difference in what I do. Like, I just I try not to, like I said, overthink things. When you overthink things, you know, it can affect your game the next day. Yeah. And that's what I've learned since I got older. No, that's sick. That's sick. Obviously, now you're playing, you're scoring goals. Like, obviously, it looks like the season's going to come to you. And then now... But what's what like? Obviously, everyone's got like dreams to go further. Now, what do you want to do from now? That like, obviously, you want to score goals. Do you, do you see yourself progressing? And yeah, like, I think push on, get yeah, another move. Yeah, that's the next. That's the next step for me. You know, um, obviously, to play at the Premier League. You know, I'm enjoying my time at Huddersfield at the moment. Of course, you know, ever since I got there, the fans have been great. Was, me and wait, wait, was, is we on you? What do you say? He said you should be watching videos of Centre Centre Halves. Hey, when I buck he Ezri, yeah, he's though. in trouble, you know. He's in trouble when I buck him. Look at this guy, man. Nah, um, I can't remember what I was saying. This guy's interrupting. Um, nah, yeah, um, I'm enjoying my time at Huddersfield, obviously. Obviously, my aim is obviously playing the Premier League, of course. Um, and obviously, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I've had a good season so far. And like you said, we don't know if the season's going to continue. Mm. But obviously, we'll see what the future holds. Going through, going through your journey, going through your journey so far, like you said, you touched, you touched, like you touched on it. But I wanted to know: was there ever, was you like ever in a dark place where you thought, is this really going to happen for me? Like, do I want to play football still, or like, am I going to progress? Yeah, man. I think that period between when I was seventeen and maybe nineteen. I didn't know how to handle it, you know. And I was going out a lot, you know. Mm. I was um, feeling sorry for myself, always blaming others. Mm. But it was me I had to look at, like, and that's why eventually I started seeing a psychologist. And he helped me massively. Like, I'm still in contact with him now, you know. Cause I don't want to just use him because he helped me and then just mm. not use him. So mm. we still talk. And he helped me massively, you know. He made me see things in a different light. Mm. Like, I remember, like, Every every game he black to me, it's just it's just a ball and a pitch with players on it. Like you know, like it's just, it's, and that's that's how I look at things now. You know, like I used to overthink things. You know, mm. I used to be like, oh, how's he ahead of me? Sort of thing. Like mm. you know, and then eventually I just said, you know what? Let me just do my thing. Everyone's journey is different. You know. Yeah, of course. And I got down and I focused. I worked hard and I and I focused. You know, and I think that's the that's the biggest thing for me. But yeah, I was in a dark place, man, and it's not easy. Like people don't understand. People think, like you said, footballers got it easy. Mm. It's not that easy, you know. Like when you're used to doing something that you love, and then you end up feeling like it's a job. Mm. Like that's when you need to take yourself away from that and reflect on yourself and look at yourself mm. and be like, "Rah." Like it's all about strong mentality in this game, I think. Of course, of course, it is, man. Like like you said, I've been there, I've done that. Same age, like you said, it was hard for me. And where, where I didn't have guidance like that, obviously I had my parents in that, but I just couldn't take it. Like like I said, I've said it like about yeah. three times in this um, live that I've been doing. Like when the manager was making me do running for no reason. That, and he didn't even have a problem with me. He's just, like he probably, he was probably coaching you at the time, Johnny Jackson, or was he playing at the time as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing and coaching. Yeah, it was me, Johnny Jackson and a couple of others. We was just running in the morning, Running in the afternoon, and I'm 19, 18. I couldn't take it, KG yeah, man. Difficult. I went home. Obviously, I was staying up there. I just come back to London, and I, I stayed in my yard, and I said I'm not going back to football. Yeah. And then uh, I was talking to my friends. I was talking to my parents. They said, No, you need to go back. You have to be strong enough. But I couldn't take it. It was like two weeks. They kept sending me letters saying you're getting fined. Two weeks wages. I was like, I don't care. I don't even want to play ball no more. Until yeah. like a situation happened. And he got sacked. Then uh, uh, um, the Colchester offered me another two-year deal. I was like, ah, cool. Let me go back. But yeah, it's tough, man. And it's, the, the people don't know how like 
strong you have to be and how mentally tough you have to be to survive in this game. Because if you're weak, I'm telling you, you won't survive. And I'm just happy that it was at, at that age where I was 18, 19. So I've learned and I can give that knowledge to the younger players who are going yeah. through it. But yeah, man, it's, it's tough. Yeah, no, like you said, man, people don't realise. And it's it's crazy because, like you said, you were doing runs, whatever, with Jacko. Yeah. Yeah. And that will make you hate ball because you're thinking, why am I running every day? Running, you know? Yeah. Nah, it's, it's difficult, man. It is difficult. Uh, you scored You scored a couple great goals. Like, talk to me about, obviously, one of them was in the Premier League, but talk to me, like, about your best memories. Best memories. Um, all right. First thing that comes to mind is obviously West Ham away. My second goal. Mm. You know, I just, I just improvise. Like, it's a goal that I've never really scored. You know, and that was scoring that goal. Like back, back. At, I'm back at home, basically. You know, mm. I'm round the corner from from the stadium, from from them sides, and you know, to see my family up in the stands, yeah, my brethren's up in the stands, and just celebrating in front of them. Like the that feeling was just unbelievable. I'm not getting a brace that day against West Ham, and it was just like, raw. Like this is it. This is the big stage. Like yeah. this is really it. Like. I remember going out that night. Obviously, we lost in the end. And it was gutted. Mm. But I remember going out. And then, like, people come up to you, like, oh, like, great goal today. You know, that feeling. Yeah, you know, feeling, it's, yeah. It's a nice feeling, you know. And you're getting um, that recognition, like, you've done your thing. Like, you've just got to the yeah. program. You're doing your thing, yeah. Yeah, so after that, it was like, raw, like, it, this is what it's like, sort of thing. Mm. Like, I want more of this. Yeah, of And then after that, I remember just saying, like, let me just keep going. Let me just keep going. And this season, you know, what goals have I scored this season? My goal against um against Wigan, you know, I've just cut in and I've just laced it near post top bins. Near post, I see like, that top bins, yeah. That was a finish. Like, there was oh, another wow. one you wrapped it the other side. There was another one you wrapped the other side. Um I can't remember. Have been Barnsley. Barnsley, mm -hmm. I cut in and wrapped it. Yeah, no, it's becoming my trade mark finish this season to Wait, be so K K no, bro, hey, KG, are you playing up front or on like on the wing? No, I'm playing on the wing at the moment. Yeah. No, that's obviously, I grew up as a striker. I grew up yeah. as a striker. Um, but obviously, like manager come in, saw me in training. I'm a, I'm a, I say I'm a different type of striker. You know, I'm not one of yeah. them ones. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it, and I'm gonna set you. You know, I like to run at players, or I like to make runs in behind. So he saw that, and wanted to use me on the left because he knows I like cutting in. Cutting in. So it's worked out for for both parties to be fair. And you're quite um, technically gifted, isn't it? I remember there's one free kick you scored back in the days for Charlton. I think it was from far out. Yeah, I, mean, I know what one you're talking about. I think it's on my Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That that one's mad. That one's mad. I'm so struggling what, to so... score one in first team, though, man. <laughs> no, nah, don't worry. You're going to score one of them. Don't worry. Just when, when you get it, put the ball down and do what you do. So what's the... Obviously, like you said, the higher you go up, the facilities get better. Like, What's the difference between Charlton and... Huddersfield. Um, obviously, Charlton's just like facilities, like are good. You know, you got the gym in there and all that. Um, but Huddersfield, like you go into the building and it's like everything's like kind of new. Mm -hmm. We're still doing it up now. Like we've got a sauna in there, got ice bath, got hot bath, like everything you need really. Like got a big gym upstairs. Mm -hmm. Like it's, there's more variety there, you know. And we're separate from the academy. Yeah. Similar to Charlton, but obviously, like everyone's kind of close together. Yeah. Like, and for me, like going there <coughs> was like, raw. This is the next step. Mm. So I wonder what the next step's gonna be like. Yeah. But now, like, we're lucky. Like, you know, when you when you get to a good team that that has good facilities, you're lucky. You get your your kit washed. Like, I, when I was at Cambridge and and Cooley, like you wouldn't even get your your, your kit washed. You know what I mean? Mm. And you take them things for granted. So for me, like going. Down to Cambridge and Cooley, like made me realise that we are lucky. Yeah, and I'm, I'm always grateful and thankful mm. for what what's been given to us. No, no, of course, no. Like during your career and during your journey that you're on so far, like what was the like um, support from? How's the support from your family been? Yeah, no, massive. Like my mum's obviously the biggest, the biggest one out of all of them. You know. Um, she's been there every step of the way from taking me on a bus down to Charlton when I was 12, 13, you know, to travelling up to Huddersfield to watch me play. 
mm. you know she's she's my inspiration you know like everything I do I do for her so no she's been she's been massive in my life yeah no that's great any any do you not like do you want to play for England um like, you never say never you know mm. I'm not gonna sit here and say yeah I want to go play for England because I'm a long 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 way away yeah I'm still young but like I said you never say never you know next step for me is obviously to get back to the Prem yeah of course like, whether that be with Huddersfield or or elsewhere but that's that's the main name for me um, just get back to the Prem whenever the time comes and then we'll go from there but of course I think every boy's dream is to play for England as well no of course being a winger slash striker like you said back in the days like not even back in the days when a couple of years back obviously wingers it wasn't about stats really you could score three goals like and be the best player on the pitch every single week like week in week out but now what Ronaldo and Messi and Sol, um, Salah, Mane, all these people doing, they're getting numbers. So what's your game like? Do you, do you, like, do you, do you look at yourself and say, like, I need to get this amount of goals, this amount of assists, or you just go with the flow? Yeah, so obviously, when you're younger, you don't really care about that. You just mm. care about playing well. I think one thing I've learned since getting to the first team because obviously the likes of Ronaldo and Messi, they've hit the heights. They've set the standard of football. So mm. everyone looks at stats. So when I go into a game, I'm thinking, right, I need to get goals or assists here to help the team win. Like, that's yeah. my main priority. That mm. like, Performance aside, obviously everyone wants to play well. But yeah. you know what it's like in this game, you can't always have the best of games. Yeah. So if I'm having a tough game, I'm thinking, right, cool. I know I can score. Like, let me get in a position where, you know, I can get myself a scoring opportunity. And I remember we played Wigan away this season where I scored that goal and I weren't having the best of games, I'll be honest mm. with you. But when I got that chance, like, and I scored it, that's what you're judged on, you know? Yeah. No one really remembers how you played. Yeah, you're judged on goals, stats, like defenders, goalkeepers. You're judged yeah, on clean course. sheets. Mm. That's how the game is. So, game for is. me, that's, that's massive. Stats is massive. Mm. People want to people wanna pick up the paper the next day to see KG. Two goals and assist. Yeah, that's what I mean, man, and that's what I try to try to do all the time. And it's good because I got good people around me, you know. Mm. And we try to have competition with my bedrooms. Don't matter what league you're in, you know. Always stats. What's What's been the hardest opponent like fullback you played against? Has there been anyone that's been like kept tackling you and you're like, brother, just give me a yard. Let me just cross the ball once, please. Like, obviously, this is going to be difficult to say because obviously I know the the rivalry between Leeds and Huddersfield. But yeah. I remember we played Leeds away. Um, that was the last game we played. And um, that Luke Ayling was just on me like a rash. Mm. Like, I, just, I just couldn't breathe. But they all were, you know, like they hunting packs. They made it so difficult for us. Serious. And I remember just be like, flipping hell, like, I'm blowing here. Like, I ain't blowed like this since we played Prem. Like, why am I blowing like this sort of thing? Man. But they were just, they were just on it, to be fair to him. They were on it. And he was on me. Yeah. That's mad. Right, who's the best player? Who's the best player you played alongside or played against? Um, the best player I've played against will have to be Eden Hazard. Like I said, when I made my debut, he just he like I can't even explain what he did. He was just a joke, man. Joke, Medi. Like he he'll walk all game. He won't run. He won't track back. But as soon as he gets the ball, he'll run past three, four man and create something. Like that, so for man, me, like that. Nah, like, yeah, like he's he's stupid. Anyone that seen Hazard or played against Hazard, like he's stupid, and he's yeah. he's quite chubby, you know. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, where's the extra? There was a large shirt and that for a <laughs> guy. <laughs> but he's he's a joke, man. He's a joke. Um, best player I played with. Um, I'm gonna say Joe Gomez, you know. Yeah. What he's done in the game. You know, at his age, he's 23. You know, he's won Champions League with Liverpool. He's mm. played pretty much all this season, looking like they're going to win the Premier League. Yeah. Like, and obviously, I played with him. I came through the ranks with him at Cholton. And that guy is just an animal, man. Like, has he always been, has he always been that strong and good from young? Yeah, man. Like, he's always been strong. Like, from when we, he was 13, he was playing under 18s. Like, it was just ridiculous. Mm. Like, what he was doing, always played up his ages. England... For, like didn't matter where it was, mm. so I'm gonna say him. I'm gonna say him, yeah. No, that's cool. Like, obviously, you had a few managers and that. 
like obviously you, you took on information from everyone what was like what who stood out to you the most that gave you like the information that you needed or gave you advice that you needed that you took on board and you thought you know what um it's difficult because I've got two managers in mind that I feel like gave me the opportunity to get to where I am today. Mm. And that's Harry Kill and Lee Boyer, who's managing yeah. for Charlton now. Mm. But I'm going to say Harry Kill because when I went there, uh, he knew my situation. Yeah. He knew what, what I've been going through. And I used to play against him when he was manager for 23s at Watford. Yeah. And he just said to me, listen, like, I've seen you play. Like, you've got tons of ability in my eyes. Like, I just want you to go out there and enjoy it sort of thing. He didn't put mm. no pressure on me yeah. He said, don't think about it. If you don't score the first game, don't worry about it. I'll give you four games. He gave me a platform, so I'll give you four games. Like, And then, obviously, as a manager, if you don't do your thing, then you're going to have to sit on the bench. But if yeah. you do, then you'll play. Like, he kept it so real with me. And then, for me, it was like, I went home the next day, like, right, like, like he believes in me, sort of thing. Like, he's going to give me time. And I remember going in on my debut, scoring. Next game, well, uh, is this, scoring. Is this, well, sorry, sorry, KJ. Who's this Stephen Avorian Coast, whatever, Ivory Coast? I'm talking... Esri, man, Shemi, I'm talking about. Shemi, 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 Esri. Who's the Phillies, man? Who's Ivory uh, Coast? But uh, who's Ivory Coast? The man said Ivory Coast. <laughs> hey, you, man, I'm talking about first team, man. You know, Steve Avery, big up Steve Avery. He helped me throughout my whole academy years. But, you know, he helped me get to the first team. But that was an easy ri easier ride for me, if I was yeah. I can say I'm talking about when I was Carlin's dad, Esri. I kick him out there, kick him out the thing. Uh, no, nah, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Harry Cool because he he helped me be a man in in, in the men's game. Uh, KG, obviously, before we go on, before we um, go on to your best eleven, obviously, like I said, you're still on your journey. You're still a bit young. Like, what would you say to the youngsters that even where you're still young and you're kicking ball that? What would you say to them if they want to be where you are? Obviously, like you, you made that journey transition. You played League One, get you went down to League Two on loan and stuff. Now you find yourself in the Prem. What would you say to the youngsters that are trying to do the same thing? Just believe in yourself, man. Mm. Believe in yourself. Work hard. Deal with criticism, you know. But obviously, handle the praise well. Like yeah. that's the one thing. Mentality is so big in this game. Like, no, 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 wait, wait. We do... reload that that one there. What you just said. Handle the criticism, and what's that one? Reload that. Come back again. Say that again. That I like that one. I like that one. You gotta handle the criticism and mm -hmm. obviously balance the the positivity. Mm -hmm. You know, mentality mm -hmm. is is crucial. You know, you you know what it's like, man. Like it's not yeah. easy. It mm -hmm. is not easy. You know, everyone thinks like, oh yeah, like anyone can play football. If anyone could play football, then there would be no football because the money would run out because there'd be so mm -hmm. many players. Yeah. But um, nah, man. Like honestly, work hard and. Never ever let anyone tell you that you can't do it. Yeah, of course. That's one thing that I'm that I'm big on, like the amount of people that. Well, when I was at school, I was I wasn't the best in school. My teacher saying you're not gonna be a footballer. This and that. Just laugh it off, man, and move. Mm. You know, you can only improve yourself. So yeah, that, that that's that's the main thing. But you have to have a strong mentality. You have to. Mm. No, big up KG and now big up KG and now. KG, best eleven. Best eleven. All right. <sighs> I've been thinking about this one still, man. The midfield is tough. Um, <laughs> but now, nah, in goal, I'm going to go Nick Pope, play for mm. Burnley. You know, I big up so well Rabbi, in the game. Song, in the building. Big up Rabbi still. Um, yeah, so Nick Pope in goal. Guys, uh, <laughs> Ben Hamer. <laughs> um, right back. I'm beefing Amp. Like, you, he made it hard for me, but you know, I'm going to go Danny Simpson, you know. Yeah. Premier, Premier League winner experience and that, you know, been heavy in the game. Um, two centre-halves who I believe will play, will both play together for England one day, Esri and um, Joe Gomez. No, nah, don't put Esri because Esri's there, Esri. No, don't nah. Esri because Esri. Esri, no one. Esri, get out of here, man. No, nah, I'm beefing him, but I'm beefing him, but Esri, Esri's serious, man. Let's go. But I'm not even, even going to big him up, man. I was even going to give him a nice... I'm not even going to big him up. <laughs> Joe Gomez is the captain of the team, not Ezri. Trust me on that one. <laughs> um, left back. Has to be Jay De Silva. Like, this kid is... He's a joke, man. Yeah. So small. 
like a dwarf man, but the guy can play. Yeah. Uh, centre mid. So I'm gonna go with a sitter. Holding mid, I'm gonna go Francis Coquelin. Woo! He came on loan to us from from Arsenal, mm. and um, I remember our first session. And you know what it's like. You know when you're you run rings around people in training, like you never really get tackled. Remember, I tried to run past this guy and he clamped me. Yeah. Like, I think this was on a Friday with a game the next day, and I was in in the physio room, like ice bucket in my foot. Because <laughs> I was really in pain. Like it was nuts. I'm just saying, yeah, he's serious, man. Tackle and pass, like he was serious. Um, this 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 way it gets hard, man. Because then you got you got Joe Rebo mm. and you got Phil Billin. Mm. And obviously, I can't play them both together. They're both left foot. They're both similar players. Mm. But you know what? I'm going to go for Joe. Mm. And the only reason I'm going to go for Joe, not because he's my boy, but because Joe came to us at 18 and he never played academy football like that. I think he came from... Where did he come from? He come from, he come from let's get it, Nigeria. <laughs> 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 A Rebo come from somewhere. I can't remember where it was. Sutton or somewhere? I can't remember. But anyways, like, this guy come. I remember watching. He was training with 23 and I was with the first team. I remember looking over saying, like, who's this spider? Like, you know Joe? <laughs> like, Joe's six foot three, but his feet are six foot and his little body is the three, the three inches. <laughs> like, I remember saying, who's this guy? Like, but nah, man. Like, I'm going to go for Jaribo. Baller, man. Baller. Mm-hmm. Stains, that's it, Ez. <laughs> Stains. Um, and then... With him, I'm going to go Alex Pritchard. Like Huddersfield with me right now. Mm. Like another one, small, but he's a baller, man. He's a player, man. He can play. Um, on the left, I'm going to go with Mill Smith Rowe. Mm. Like another one, young young player, along from Arsenal. Tons of ability, man, honestly. Like he can play, man. Good player. Um, on the right, Ademola Lutman. Baller. Big baller, big baller, yeah. Baller. Mm. Like, another one like Joe, like, came to us at 17, never played academy like that. Mm. And he just, his, like, his progress was, was nuts. Nice. Only played a year in the academy, went on to the first team, and then, and then, yeah, like, just, just kicked on and just done a madness. Nice. Nice. People are telling me, um, Abere, Casey Palmer, like, I'm talking about first team, man. Like, all these men are ballers. Um, but up top, my boy Lau Taylor, man. You probably played against Lau, innit? Yeah, 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 I played against Lau plenty of times. Good striker, man. Very good. Yeah, no, nah, Lau, man. Came to Cholton, flames. Mm. Like, he came to us on flames. They're not scoring like 20 something goals last season. And obviously, this year, it's been a lucky of injury. But he's still got his, like, his stats for goals are, are unbelievable. Mm. But no, nah, yeah, man, like, that's my gun, man. That's my team. Big team, big team, big team. Wait, yeah, before we leave, yeah, when Aribo came to you, lot, yeah, what was his drip like? Shambolic. Like, Aribo <laughs> has no drip. <laughs> Aribo has no drip. Hey, Aribo, Esri, Esri vouch for me. Esri vouch for me on this one. Hey, Aribo, hey, two people have said his drip is gay, Z. Hey, his drip was really doing Jenga, Jenga, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, nah, no, nah, on a real like, his hair saved him. His hair now has saved him because his yeah. hair. Well, was... I was gonna say, what, what did they have them, them, Booker T hairstyles back in the days? You know that just normal hair, t- that normal hairstyle, but like his hair just like a, like a twig <laughs> everywhere. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> look, everyone, look, everyone knows Joe was funny, man. But you know what it was with him, like. He was like, like a little kid. Joe never used to say anything. Joe got oh, a voice well, now. As we, as we said, his clothes were too small for him. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, but don't make me get onto Ezri, though. This guy comes in in colourful colours, man. Colourful colours. No, Ezri lied to me. Ezri said, Ezri said, Ezri said that it comes in. It was Bob. Ezri said he will come in shorts and all them things there. He don't care. Shorts, dry legs with, you know, them Uncle Margellas. <laughs> the, the wooden Margellas. And a t-shirt where you know when it comes up like this, you know when oh! it comes up like that. <laughs> that was Esri. Esri, <laughs> I am not capping. So Esri, you went with the whole Hogan things. <laughs> no, Esri, 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 go up, Esri. No, 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 Esri. No. 
Nah, Ezri's moving Ezri. back. Ezri was, nah. He's lucky that, you know, got a good contract now and all mm. that, you know. Yeah, now see, he's just in quite decent these days. I'm thinking, mm, Ezri, like, yeah, cleaned up still. Uh, look, 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 Sancho's, Sancho's here, little baby. I call Sancho little baby. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. No, nah, but, no, nah, your journey, your journey's been crazy, man. Like you said, for you two, <coughs> I've done what you've done so far, bro. Man, just wishes you all the best, man. And I, I just want you to go there, all the way to the top, and don't stop scoring goals, bro. You deserve it. No, I appreciate it, man. For real. Uh, appreciate it. Man. Jumping on, man. Thank you for jumping on, KG. But, and before I go, for the people, for the people that said wait, at the start... Wait, wait, hold on, Mehdi. So, Sancho and Ezra trying to get on to me. <laughs> ah, hey, even hey, calling he, me Carl. He named, it, he, named, hey, he named his top 11... He said, he said, Sanch said, name your top 11. You're too late, mate. Hey, uh, you know what it is? And before, before I duck out, yeah, where's Noobs and um, Paddy and um, Ezra and that? I didn't say, I didn't say, um, um, have you done your 5KG run? I said, have you done your 5K? <laughs> but because obviously I'll be calling the KG, I said KG. So I said 5KG, you get me? I didn't say 5KG run. You get me? No, but KG, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Like I said, man, just want you to get me. No one, hey, people say sky's the limit. Sky's not the limit, man. Just fly, do your thing, keep scoring goals, and do your yeah, thing, man. man. Love, Love for coming on, KG, pleasure. man. Take yeah, man, care. Nice one, bro. Yeah, Stay you safe. Too, cool. cool.